In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a early game Spellblade build using the Prisoner class. You can use the Astrologer class as well if you already have this, but you'll probably want to use one of these two classes. I prefer the Prisoner class because it starts the game with an s stock, which is a dexterity scaling weapon, although you don't have to use this if you don't want. Um, but it also comes with a staff and a really good spell early on. You're going to replace this spell in a little while, but it's not bad early on in the game. The first thing that you're going to want to do, you know, once you kind of get out into the world and get to the Church of Ella and everything and all that, is you're going to want to go get some more sorceries. In the Waypoint Runes, there is the Sorcerer Trainer there, Sorcerer Selen sells some spells there, and there is actually an Academy Scroll that's like just a little bit down the road from her up on a hill that's been guarded by like a group of enemies. You can actually just run up on top of one of the buildings there, it's kind of like a broken down building, uh, and pick it up and take it to her to unlock some more spells, which you want to do, because you're going to need one of them from her. The spells that you want to pick up from her are Glintstone Pebble, uh, Scholar's Armaments, and Carrion Slicer. These are the three spells that are going to be kind of your bread and butter in the early game. You can obviously supplement them with other spells later on, but these are the three you're going to want to have. You're only going to have two slots until you get that third slot, so I suggest using Glintstone Pebble and Scholar's Armaments, or Glintstone Pebble and Carrion Slicer, one of those two combinations at the beginning. But the best way to go get a third slot real fast is to go to Uridi's Rise, which is in the uh, Weeping Peninsula. It's the tower there. There's sort of a little puzzle you have to do to find the hidden turtles. The data there is on the wiki if you need to know where these exactly are. You go into there and you're going to get a memory stone, which is going to give you a third slot. You don't even have to kill anything to do this, really. So it's going to be real, real fast for you. Then you can equip all three of those spells. You'll also want to replace your staff while you're down there in Weeping Peninsula. You can get the Demi-Human's Queen Staff from the ruins that are just west of there. There's a Demi-Human uh, sort of sorcerer in there, big one. If you kill it really quickly, you'll be able to switch out your staff. And from that point forward, you're going to want to upgrade the Demi-Human Queen Staff in order to deal increased damage. So the general setup for this build is you're going to carry your s stock in your right hand or, you know, another dex weapon. You don't have to use the s stock, but it's what it comes with and it's kind of fun to use. And it has a really good skill and impaling thrust. Very good range, very high damage. So I highly recommend using that, but you can use any other dex-based weapon that you want or any other weapon that you like that you meet the requirements for, but you don't want to go crazy pumping strength or something to meet the requirements of a weapon. But any other weapon that you like, you can supplement here instead if you want. So you got your staff in your left hand, and you got your weapon in your right hand, and you're going to buff it with Scholar's Armaments while you're making your way through zone. This is going to like double or triple your damage in some cases. Uh, it's just really, really strong, and it outperforms actually putting like a magic uh, Ashes of War on your weapon. So the best way to do this is to use Scholar's Armaments to buff your weapon. It's the best way to like save uh, mana so you're not using like Carrion Slicer on everything. You can actually use Carrion Slicer on everything if you go like all mana flasks or something like that, but because you're going to be in melee range, you will get hit sometimes, and then you won't have a way to heal, so I don't advise that. So you're going to buff with Scholar's Armaments. You have to have both of these out at the same time in order to buff it. You buff that. You attack things. This lasts like two or three minutes. It lasts a very good time compared to some of the other Souls games. That's going to get you through levels, etc., or to harder enemies where you'll instead attack with Carrion Slicer in order to finish them off. Carrion Slicer is extremely deadly. This spell does so much damage. It's a boss killer. It's a tough enemy killer. All you need to do is like read their attacks, dodge you know their last attack, run in, and just start spamming. I trade damage very, very often with this setup in order to just burn bosses faster and then heal up and go rest afterward. You can be more cautious and roll away if you want, but you can just melt bosses by spamming this as fast as you can. Keep in mind that it consumes stamina, so you're only going to be able to, you know, go as long as you have stamina. Increasing endurance doesn't give you much stamina, so I don't recommend it for this build, but you're going to want to try and not block or not roll too much before you get in there, so you can just spam away at this thing. It doesn't really stagger enemies, so you need to be ready to roll away when they start retaliating but you're going to spam it and it just melts things. Another really great thing about Carrion Slicer's FP cost is it's only 4 compared to Glintstone Pebble 7, which means that you actually save FP by using this ability. So if you can take enemies down with it, you're going to conserve a lot more FP than if you're using Glintstone Pebble. Glintstone Pebble is really there to thin out enemies in situations where if you ran in, you'd be outnumbered, you know, 3 to 4 on 1. Maybe you take one out right away, but then you still have 2 or 3 enemies that are ganging up on you. you this build doesn't do really well when it's out it's completely surrounded. So you don't want to get surrounded, and Glintstone Pebble is really there to thin out enemies in those scenarios. Or scenarios where, you know, you can't get to the enemy. They're across the gap, or they're flying in the air. And it's really nice as a Spellblade to have that sort of flexibility. If you find yourself using Glintstone Pebble far more than Carrion Slicer, or far more than Scholar's Armament, I highly suggest making a Mage Build. Just make a Mage Build, follow a Mage Build guideline, because that's kind of more of your playstyle. This will happen to some people who play this style. 
because it's easy to use ranged attacks. But if you're someone who wants to get up close personal and melt bosses in melee range, then this is the build for you. Stat-wise, I basically pump Intelligence and Vigor early on. Anytime you're playing a melee character, you need Vigor, and this character does not start out with a lot of it. So I like to get that to 15 or 20 pretty quickly and get Intelligence to 20 as quickly as I can. So those two things to 20. And then you can start to increase Dexterity to increase the damage of your weapon. The Estoc and Rapier don't have great scaling by default, but as if you upgrade them, they will. And you can actually get uh, Rapier later on in the game. The really only difference between the Rapier and the Estoc that I can see is that the Rapier has a better critical rating, meaning like if you parry someone and stab them, or if you backstab them, or if you stagger an enemy and you knock them down and you thrust them, uh, it's going to do more damage. You don't tend to do that very much with this build, so it's not super crucial. So if you find that, you know, you're doing these things, you might want to make a different build. You don't very do it very often with this. The S-Stock and Rapier don't really stagger enemies. You're not using a parrying shield or anything like that. So it shouldn't be a big deal. If you already upgraded the S-Stock, but you're like, oh, I wish I had the extra critical, it's not that big of a deal. Just stick with whatever you're upgrading. You're going to want to prioritize upgrading your staff over your melee weapon because it's going to increase the damage of your Scholar's Armaments and your Carrion Slicer and your Glintstone Pebble. It's going to affect all three of these things. That will translate to more melee damage. So you want to prioritize upgrading your staff first, and then after you've upgraded your staff a bit, focus on upgrading your melee weapon as well. After you complete Stormvale Castle, you can actually get a Rapier plus 8 from Roger. He'll just give you one. Uh, so you can switch to that if you want. I don't particularly like the ability on it. It doesn't seem to do any more damage than just poking something twice. And I really like the range of Impaling Thrust. But if you want a weapon that's got, you know, more upgrade really fast, you can use that as well. You can just swap out the uh, ability on it for, you know, something else if you want. Another important note here is that if you put a magic-based Ashes of War on your S-Stock or your weapon, whatever it is, uh, you won't be able to buff it with Scholar's Armaments, and you actually deal less damage generally than with Scholar's Armaments. Admittedly, you don't have to buff your weapon every time, but you should have plenty of mana flasks, and you should, and you will hit harder using Scholar's Armaments. So it's another reason not to put or trade out the Impaling Thrust on the S-Stock. I, again, like that ability better than some of the other abilities I've tested and you also do more damage at the same time. Another really important thing about Dexterity as well is it actually reduces cast speed. So not only is it going to increase the damage with your melee weapon, but if you're using Carrion Slicer, for instance, it'll speed up how fast you use that ability, which will just make it even more deadly. So you're going to increase your regular damage with your, your sword or whatever, and you're also going to increase the speed that Carrion Piercer is used. I don't know the exact numbers on this. I haven't done enough testing, but it, they sort of benefit each other at the same time. And lastly, for Talismans, I like to use the Blessed Talisman and the Turtle Talisman. These two allow you to regenerate health, which allows you to focus more on flasks and not waste flasks in between fights to heal up because you know you're not going to regain health. There's a lot of time spent exploring where you can just heal up naturally with the Blessed Talisman. It's just really good in a lot of builds in general. But the Turtle Talisman is there to increase your stamina recovery. You burn through your stamina spamming carry and piercer and attacks with this build because you want to attack as fast as you can, kill things quickly and recovering that stamina faster means that you can go on the offensive faster. So I like to equip both of these once you get a second talisman slot. Uh, if you beat Margit at the Stormvale Castle, you'll get a second talisman slot. So if you want a second one real quick, you can just go kill him and get that if that's something you feel comfortable doing. So that's pretty much for an early game Spellblade build. You can actually use a shield with this build in the offhand and the staff in the right hand if you want to play more of an enchanted knight build as well. It's kind of like a variant. This allows you to block and then spam carry and piercer. It's very, very effective in some cases. But again, blocking drains stamina, which you then can't use to spam carry and piercer. So it's a little counterintuitive, but it does work in some situations. And one last thing I want to mention too is that mounted combat is a little wonky with this build because you can't cast spells from mounted combat unless you have the staff in the right hand. So you're going to have the S-Doc in the right hand, so you're only going to be able to melee. And the S-Doc is terrible at melee combat in my opinion. It's really hard to hit anything. So if you plan on doing like any sort of fights where you're going to use carry and piercer, for instance, if you do like the dragon fight, and you're just mailing him with Carrion Piercer on horseback, swap the staff to your right hand before you do that fight, and then when you're done, swap it back. So that's pretty much it for this build. I hope you found it helpful. I think I'm only going to do like one more beginner build possibly before I move on to like mid-game builds, including like items in the Learning of the Lake and beyond, because I think most people are going to be moving on and figuring out like, want to figure out how to evolve their build, what to incorporate into their builds already, and where to get other items. So we're going to move on to that pretty soon. Uh, but I will try and get one more build. I don't know if it's going to be... I think it'll be like a Pyromancer build or maybe a Faith-based build that's just like a Faith caster. People have been asking for that. 
So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll try and get to them as soon as I can. Thank you.